Welcome to another requested tutorial. Uh, we're gonna try and figure out how to put uh, the fire on this dude's swords that I did in a different image onto this little bunny's sword. So uh, I can get rid of that fire guy. We don't need him anymore. That's just for reference. Uh, what I have here is a bunch of photos of fire. So basically I'm gonna show you how to paint fire. It's gonna be uh, real cool. And I got uh, all these textures, all these fire images from textures.com uh, so that it will be legal for me to use them in uh, my art. Though it doesn't matter that much for this tutorial, I'm not profiting off of anything. So anyway, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a fire brush. Um, and I, I got a few fire images to see which one I like the best. And I also got this smoke image over here just because sometimes smoke makes the best fire, oddly, for brushes. Um, but uh, basically, if I, if I find one that I like, we can just move on. Um, I'm actually seeing a spot in here. Basically, you want a circular area that you like a lot. Um, and I'm going to feather this out just a hair, um, meaning my selection edges will not be exactly crystal clear. Uh, it'll be smoothed out on the edges. So what I'm going to do here is select an area. Oh, hold on. What do I want to do? Let's do this. Oops. Let's do it a little bit better than that. I'm just holding shift to get a perfect circle with that. And I kind of like that. But what I want to do, oops, not invert. I want to invert that whole thing and also um, and I did that by hitting Control I, or for you Mac users, Command I. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is hit uh, Control Shift U, which is going to desaturate the whole deal. Now, the reason I did all of that was A, when you paint with your brush, it only paints what's in black, because um, it only knows black and white. You change the colors as you go when you paint with a brush. It's only only one color. You can do different things with the mixing brush, but we're not going to get into that. Um, so I had to invert the colors to be black as what I'm painting. Um, I'm just going to copy that and paste it um, in a new layer. So you can see I got some fuzzy edges because of what I did with the, the inversion, but um, I'm going to mess around with that a little bit. So I'm just going to make a new layer and fill that in white and see what we got. So basically, um, if I were to reselect this, uh, it would just be that brush, that circular brush. Oops, I don't want to move that layer. I want to be on this layer. So what I'm going to do is just adjust this a little bit. I want to uh, first get my eraser and get something fuzzy in there. And just, and you could use a uh, white brush as well. Again, it doesn't paint what's in white. So that's something, it's, it's similar to masks, um, but basically I want to get something that doesn't have a crisp edge because fire doesn't have like an exact circle edge on it. It needs to be a little bit random like this. And I might leave a little bit of the haziness in there, the the slight, I don't know if you'll be able to see it with the video quality, but there is some, um, maybe if I can drag this out, maybe not. It's going way too slow to handle that. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a slight gray around it, and that might be good for a glow, but uh, I think I want to punch this up a little bit. So I'm just going to go to levels on this. And move the the lowest one up to basically where the the slant meets the ground here um, maybe that's a little extreme but I like that I'm gonna say okay on that and what I'm gonna do here is just hold control and click on the picture the image of the layer that I have sorry to be confusing you jumping across the screen here but we're all the way to the right and we're just clicking on the image on the layers um, and that'll select that layer uh, so that I can do this. I go to up, up to edit, 
and then I'm gonna say define brush preset so that's gonna make this a brush it's not gonna be the final brush but it's gonna be a brush um, and if I like this then I'll just keep this and we'll ignore all the other fires these are for options if I really hate this but um, let's just close out of that or not close it but hide it and then I'm just gonna use black to paint and see how I like this I'm on an eraser not a brush let's change that I go down to my new brush and so this is what this looks like not much like fire right um, so let's undo that and we're gonna adjust some things about the brush first so transfer is probably something that we want to mess with um, basically we want we want it to be affected by the opacity jitter you can also toggle that on and off up here um, and we probably want the flow to be controlled by the pen pressure as well if you don't have a pen don't worry about it um, basically this all doesn't matter you just have to turn transfer off and then lower the opacity uh, to whatever works for you in that particular stroke and you'll just adjust the opacity as you go so that might look something like this if I do it with a mouse okay so you can go about it that way or you can lower the flow as well to mess with that flow actually looks a little bit better with with this so and I was just using the mouse for that it's going to do it once more with the flow that looks much better. Um, anyway, I'm going to raise both of those back up because I'm using the pen. I just wanted to let you know that can be done with pen pressure. See, it's giving me errors now because here, off, pen pressure, whatever. Can I prove it? Can I prove it to you? They don't care. It, all right, now it has it, whatever. It didn't know I was using a pen. It was freaking out. Um, anyway, so we don't need to mess with the color dynamics for this, uh, though I have found out that I, I like messing with color dynamics. It, it, you could use it in some way with this, and I'll show you. Uh, shape dynamics, I do want this to be messy, so we're going to change the angle quite a bit. I just want it to be off. So it's not the same repeated thing over and over, okay? Um, then I want scattering on, and we're gonna just scatter it a little bit. It's a little bit better. Uh, texture don't need, dual brush maybe. Dual brush would be good. Basically it masks it off to another thing, so you could mask it off to just one area. I probably don't want that, but as you push it kind of breaks out of that mask. That's kind of cool. I could see using that, but I'm not going to use it for this brush. So basically the final thing, I want to change the spacing out to what I like. Just drag it out to something that makes sense. And I like that. See, it already looks like fire, doesn't it? All right. Well, it's black, so we need to change that. Let's go back to the bunny picture because I like this. Um, but first, we need to save this new brush preset. Fire. Oh, oh, and I'm just gonna delete the one that was not good. Delete brush. Okay, so we got this little funky brush in here, and I also have a fire brush of my own that I normally use, but that's that's up up above. Um, and I'm just gonna close out all these. We don't need that. Don't need don't need any of these. Um, I might I might bring one back in just to show you possibilities uh, and here's my bunny okay so how am I gonna put fire on this I'm gonna create a new layer group so that looks like this little folder thing down here in the bottom right hand corner um, and you know people set up their photoshops differently so if you don't have it in the bottom right corner find it elsewhere it just looks like a little folder um, so now I have a little group and I'm gonna set the group to screen you can set it to any mode that normal layer mode would be on uh, And this one's just gonna be on screen basically screens one of the modes that uh, eliminates black and shows 
everything else in a more uh, bright way. Um, but it's not quite as intense as uh, as linear dodge or or color dodge. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add two layers within that. The bottom layer is just going to be black. So I'm going to hit D to make sure that we're on black and white. That's the default color. Um, Alt backspace to fill that. I'm just throwing out, uh, you know, shortcuts to help you out. Uh, you don't have to use the shortcuts. You just got to fill a layer with black. That's all. Um, then this layer we're going to leave blank for now. And then here's the, the thing that you need to look for is this little uh, circle that is half filled in and you find gradient map. Okay. Um, and I have a preset gradient. If you double click on this gradient image, um, it'll bring up options. Now I, I saved one because it's actual like picked colors from real fire. Um, and this is my fire gradient. So basically it goes from black to orange. This is sort of like a burnt orange, I guess, uh, to yellow to white. And um, so it basically goes black to white, but then there's fire colors in between. So um, I'm going to do that. Now what's going to happen here is um, I'm going to be painting only in white. I'm going to come down here and change my colors. You can see the foreground color is now white. Um, and what that allows me to do is uh, on this layer above the black layer, so the black is hidden, right? Um, because in in this layer group, it's screen mode, so black is hidden, okay? Um, and then the gradient map will adjust the color that's shown based on the intensity of white on this layer. So on this gradient map, if I double click on this again to see it, as it gets whiter and whiter, it's gonna change colors up through there. So on my blank layer, I can now paint. Woo! Isn't that amazing? It's crazy, man. Let me tell you. Um, but I'm just going to go in here and see if I can't make this fiery. Now, this image wasn't really planned to be a, a fiery thing. So basically, I'd want all sorts of glowy effects off to the side. Now, there's some control issues that I want to address here. And maybe I want to go to that dual brush. Let's just select that whole layer and clear it out. Maybe I want to go to a dual brush. Let's see how that dual brush works, because I didn't love the effect on that. It looked like fire, but it was kind of chaotic. You know, It's not exactly what I wanted. So uh, let's go to the dual brush. Let's have that on. Let's see if that helps me out. Because this will allow me basically to be really big with the fire, but kind of controlled in where it's at. And I'm just being real light with how I apply this. Now, the cool thing with this is you can change. Um, you know the brush that you're using it'll it'll give you a different effect so if I go to just this brush the, the soft soft brush like that um, now I can add a glow like this and it would really help to have the opacity control on just to add a soft glow to the whole deal okay um, and if you wanted to be smart, you could do that on a separate layer. Um, so I can keep adding layers and doing sort of a slightly different effect on here. So I can put like a little bit of glow on, on the rabbit or something. This isn't looking great because the colors aren't really jiving, let me tell you. But I could do that and, you know, add some glowy effects on here. Maybe the ground's on fire. He's just standing in fire with that. Go back down to the chaotic layer, grab my firebrush, wherever it may be. There we go. He's just in fire.
Yeah, I just roasted my bunny. That's very sad. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's get our bunny out of fire. Okay, no more fire bunny. Let's do this in a slightly different way. Um, so that's the fire brush. Okay, and by the way, just just to let you know. If I did a bunch of fire and then I was like, eh, not not quite the right colors, you can always go back up into here, change the color you're using. Um, maybe it's a green flame, you know, blue flame. You can do all sorts of different crazy stuff with it. So, um, you know, you can get really crazy with, with what you're doing with the gradient map there. Um, you can even change it to be darker as it gets more intense. I mean, mess around with it. it it'll be fun. Um, I do suggest doing a glow also. Um, so let's like do the, the glowy layer. I guess I'll do it on the lower layer just to, just to make it more realistic. Um, you know, add a glow. And then with this fire is like, can be, um, flowing right so uh, if you go to filter blur and then do like a motion blur that usually helps it out a little bit I'm just gonna motion blur this way and make it much less intense just a little bit so you can do stuff like that and uh, you know you might want to do that if it's out of focus in the background or whatever um, let's get rid of that and get rid of that I want to try a different approach here. So I'm going to place embedded uh, one of these flames. Let's do this because this is sort of wrapping around something. Yeah, that's perfect. It has even uh, this line that that sort of matches. So um, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and transform it. basically just skew it I'm just holding control to do this looks pretty good and then what I can do is, well, first of all, I can completely get rid of the, uh, if, I, if I got rid of the saturation, it would make it like this. It's sort of using the colors. I can make that its own group. Let's just get it out of this group to show you a different, different approach here. Get out of the group. Don't be a lemming. There we go. All right, so this is it on a normal layer. I'm just going to hide the group. We're not messing with that anymore. This is a totally different approach. Um, I'm just going to change this to either color dodge or linear dodge. There we go. Linear dodge is the one that I want. So, and the last one would be screen. We can we can look at that screen. Oops, not lighten. Lighten works, but it's not not exactly. So screen screen's pretty good too. Um, I think I like the linear dodge the best, which makes sense. It's it's the most intense one. So what do we do with all this crap down here? Um, basically, I want to create a layer mask, which is this square with a circle inside of it at the bottom right. Um, and then like the brush, um, but I guess opposite which is really confusing, but basically black hides and white shows. Um, so I'm gonna hit my brush, I'm just using the soft round, and I'm gonna change colors to be black, the one I'm painting with, and I'm just gonna paint in black. Just like this, until it's about where I want it to be. So you can do that as well. 
gonna get rid of this so his his cute face can can show to the world. And so he's not burning his hands off. Good job, Bunny. He's got a flaming sword now. Um, and, you know, this is done pretty quick. I think I, I would do a lot more adjustment with this, but I think I like this better for the sword purposes um, than what I was doing before. I usually use the other one for sort of explosions or if I'm literally painting something made of fire, um, I'll use uh, the fiery brush. I can also just use, you know, I can add to this, you know. Let's just put the group on top of that. Add to all of this nonsense. So it's sort of a different effect. It's sort of it's going everywhere, but that's sort of maybe too much scatter on the brush. But that that's a, a bunch of stuff you can do with fire, basically. And you know, just to close this video out. I'm going to change the uh, the colors here to be something I don't know like let's do like a crazy bright blue okay and let's do like a pink purple thing okay um, maybe I should have done red well it doesn't matter because I'm just having fun here I'm just gonna give this bunny Crazy eyes, crazy glowy eyes. He's looking at you. Look at that. The bunny will kill you. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. All right. Little bit of a soft glow. We need to make this look good because this is definitely important to the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you. Um, let me know if uh, you want to see any other tutorials in the future. All right. Bye-bye.